Hello and welcome to Intelligence Modifier. It's RPG Day, Day 25. Well, welcome Wednesday. I'm John, and I'm joined by Clint. Hello. And Ted. Oh, no. <laughs> and we will be talking about welcoming new people into the hobby, or at least into the table. Or onto the table? Either way. Oh. <laughs> so, Ted, uh, mm -hmm. it sounded like you had a story you had to tell about perhaps an experience uh, involving some players who were basically brand new, hadn't touched a die in their lives, perhaps. How well, did that go? Well, I had my session zero for a completely uh, for a completely brand new group of players coming to TTRPGs for the very first time. And I'll let you all know, session zero online is as awkward as we thought it was going to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to be like, let's get to know each other when you and people who are like anxious about being in front of the camera and just all this kind of stuff. So it was, it was awkward. It was a very awkward hour, but we got all, but we all got through it. And I pretty much was, and I pretty much just went, hey, what's your name? Your pronouns? What's your preferred name? Preferred pronouns? Um, well, who's your character? Because I, 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 I built everyone's characters on their own, so no one knew who was what. So I wanted to be like a big surprise, like what the party composition is. Letting everyone know I'm not going to kill you, don't worry. <laughs> like, we're here to have fun, not me just be murder bot. And then a new thing I decided was, what is your gaming experience? I actually asked, like, what is your gaming experience? Either on tabletop or on video games? Like, what do you guys just do for gaming? So you guys, like, kind of have, have an idea. And a lot of them played our previous RPGs on video games, like Skyrim or Fallout or something, so... I was like, cool, cool. So I know kind of like how to do the first couple sessions. It's kind of like you're playing like through Skyrim or something. That, that whole like, this is what it's going to kind of look like. And then move into more of the traditional D&D style stuff. So kind of kind of tailoring what uh, what they know into yeah. leading more into what they should be learning, I guess. Yeah, kind of, it, 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 it started with the, so starting with the familiar and moving onward. Um, and then I talked about some of the new things that were going to be tried out, like the is something your character would know that you don't know because you're all brand new. I'm going to be giving advantage to like the skill check we talked about in an earlier video for RPG a day, actually. And everyone's like, that's actually pretty cool. Um, I have one player who's played other tabletop RPGs before starting in the last couple of years with their mom as DM. So they're excited to try somebody new in a different game. So, but it was a. Uh, it was pretty it was pretty fun watching everyone just be like excited about like this new experience to, like be jumping into and the fact that these are players all across the US and the world because like a, a player in Australia and a player in, in in the in the United Kingdom and they're all just super excited about it just super happy and you know i got to say for me that's one of the really nice feelings is that that kind of like light that joy and happiness kind of you can just see on people's faces when they're like Wow, this is I'm having a good time. Thanks. Well, um, the, yeah. Well, the best part was we're sitting there, we're talking, and I was like, "Hey, I'm very sorry." And I was like, "Explain like this is one of the things I'm, I want to be doing with you all." And when I mentioned I wanted to get everybody's triggers, so I could remove them from the campaigns so that they're not traumatized. I saw one player actually like I I could I couldn't tell they were like super like clenched up and tight, but they actually like immediately relaxed after I said that. And I was like, and I missed like, is everything okay? I saw this, and they were like, no, it's it's cool. I just, I, I've I've watched like the first time I played in a game, our DM deliberately started like hitting some of my buttons because I'd mentioned, hey, could you make sure that this stuff isn't here? And he kept that stuff in. It, it, this was like ten years ago when she last played when they last played. So they were like worried that was gonna be another experience. I was like, no, my my job is not to traumatize you. My job is to scare you because you're playing a horror game, but to scare you in a way that's fun, like watching a horror movie and going, "Ooh, I'm scared." Not, "Oh God, anxiety attack because of the of the situation on the screen reminding me of a of drama." <laughs> All right. So that was that was a uh, that was fun. So Clint, uh, do you have a story or any thoughts, perhaps, on a good way to kind of transition players into gaming in general if they're maybe not as experienced as? say any of us three so in my game that you two are in you both know virginia 
who has never played any RPGs until I pulled her to the table, and I don't think she even played any true video games at all. Nothing like, she had a background of basically nothing. Um, base, I just kind of just told her about it. We became friends at work, and I went, hey, I do this, and da-da-da, and we play these games and she just went like oh that's neat and that's all you need you need them to say that sounds neat and you're in that's all you need <laughs> basically just kind of just talked her and is like hey i'm gonna set up a game would you like to join and it's you know it's everyone she knew she knew all of us um and sat down and just kind of explain the basics i let her build her character the way she wanted i was like here's what these different things are and just went through all the you're playing fifth edition um went through all the different class types like do you want to do fighty stuff or do you want to do magicy things and she leaned more towards magic and went oh okay that then you know that's what i always do with new players to anything do you want to hit stuff or you want to cast spells at stuff and then I know at least to go it, take something broad to something a little bit more narrow. And I go, okay, now let me just break down all the magic caster classes. And she's enjoyed the whole crud out of it. And I'm assuming she'll, she's actually even kickstarted uh, a D and D. Oh, God, it was at that cat RPG where um, it's fifth edition, but everyone's a cat instead. Um, she's yeah. kickstarted that and she actually wants to run that session. So um, I believe I was successful. Um, you know, I don't, it's funny too because I know for a fact that she plays a lot more video games now too. Yeah, well, it helps that you also gave her a PlayStation Four and um a smaller, small-ish to medium TV. So it's like playing these games. Like you do know, there's video games that are very similar to this. <laughs> kind of the reason we have modern RPGs on on video games, is kind of because of video of uh D and D and Traveler and stuff, but. That's, that's really the last how... time I. Hmm. Oh no! Go continue. Are we going to talk about how Fallout is based on GURPS exactly? That's where the special stats come from. No, actually, I wasn't. I was going to talk about one of the players my new game literally built their character like they were building a Skyrim character. Ah, it is basically fairly similar. Yeah. It's like they knew Skyrim, so they're they're like, I like to do magic and stabby things, and I was like, Blade Singer Wizard in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um that was the last time i've actually really like introduced new people other than way back in college where i had a handful of new people and i still did it the same way do you like to punch stuff or do you like to cast magic and stuff and then just fully explained kind of just gushed about the game more or less in the world and all that and my enthusiasm and excitement usually translates into getting them enthusiastic enthusiastic and excited and that's about it i haven't because i i play the same game with all of you guys i've known ted i've known you for like a decade now um oh God, yeah yeah i've known you for a while wow, jonathan yeah. i've known you for like for like a long time as well what like seven years or something like? i know what does and doesn't trigger either of you so i haven't had that conversation because anyone i run with they're either incredibly good friends i don't i've never run for someone like fresh out except for at conventions when i was doing uh running for paizo for doing those one shot things we that we we've all done actually we all did that that's the only time and i didn't have to worry about triggers or anything because they're pre-generated adventures that were just milk toast play play. simple yeah. play and play two hours good to go done nothing too yeah here's how you roll dice here's how stuff works go buy the books um so i've never had to deal with that stuff if uh when i am going to start a new campaign whenever we finish this one I'll go through that stuff to make sure because I'm not I'm trying to try not to just play D&D &D again. I'm going to try and play something different. Um, I can't think of anything else to really say. I feel I even rambled a little bit. Well, that's OK, because uh, you did remind me uh, of actually running that stuff at, uh, for Paizo at PAX. Kind of that's mostly when I've ever run for new people in a serious setting. There's been times where it's been someone's birthday and they're like, hey, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, can you like just do a silly like three hour like whatever? It's like, oh, yeah, sure. And, you know, again, people I know, so it's not crazy weird. But when I, we were doing that uh, 
I don't remember what it was called, just the sample games, I guess, for Paizo doing Pathfinder first edition. Um, it was really great because I just loved seeing people come to the table and especially some folks were, you know, fairly nervous. They don't want to mess up and they're afraid like, oh gosh, am I going to do it wrong and look like a dummy? At least for me, that was great. I loved when people did weird, wacky, dumb stuff because it's different. And it, it's just different ideas that you don't get to see every time. So it really helped to uh, kind of assuage people's fears when, you know, maybe they're like, as in a random example, I'm going to run up and high five that bandit. And you're like, what, what would he do? And you just get a big grin and say some silly fun scene with them. And they're like, oh, wow, this isn't so bad after all. And you kind of help get rid of their fear and their anxiety about trying something new. And I think that's really a, a great fun thing you can help with. But uh, uh, that, that reminds me when we were doing a uh, PAX that one year and I had that table, but wanted to do all six of the adventures with just me. And we had to get permission from the person running it to let me just sit with the same table for pretty much for pretty much six hours. <laughs> Yeah, because they did they did the first one and went. This is fun. You're a lot of fun. Can we just have you for the next like five? And I was like, I don't know if that's possible. Let me go ask. And yeah. then I had to go ask, and the guy was like, oh. I was like, they want me for the next five sessions, and you're like, sure. Because we're supposed to have like those breaks in between, so I just ran. Six, yeah. I ran. I ran. I ran a six-hour mini campaign there with a bunch of us watching and stuff. And then that last day, like all these groups are showing up to just want to play at my table and just kind of like get the same experience and, and the weirdness and stuff. And bringing their friends who couldn't make it. Like this guy's really fun. You'll enjoy him. Yeah, I had like, a I had a couple tables that like specifically wanted me and waited for for when I had an opening when they could play with me running. It was pretty cool. I enjoyed right? the table. The tables I liked at PAX the most were when it was nothing but new people. It was all fresh to tabletop because they they don't think like we do. We all think oh, like God, tabletop right. players, and we we know the solutions to most standard problems. And no, these guys will get in arguments with like talking books and stuff. It's really ridiculous. I always really enjoyed the completely fresh ones i they were the most fun just because they think way outside of the box yeah they were it's like that's the other thing about like it's like especially like, like a veteran coming into the table kind of thing too like you have someone who's there who can help kind of control the randomness of the of a new group um so that things can still get done but still have fun and go like okay it's been long enough let's 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 refocus guys but there are those problem. Those are fine. I like those veteran players that kind of like, kind of and like will veteran, nudge them, yeah. will gently nudge like, all right, we've had our fun. Like, I know where the plot is. Let me take you to it. That like, you know, parents them along. And then there's just like the annoying thing. And I've fallen into it too, which is basically you sit down the entire gaming session and you just, you're just correcting the new people. Just going, that's not possible. You can't do that. That doesn't work in this system. Da, 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 da. and i've done it before and i catch myself doing it occasionally and i i try my best not to do that and those ones are annoying and i'm one of them sometimes so i take same, responsibility same here. for it i will i will sit there and, and i started doing the approach of when a player is like asking the gm if there's like a bunch of players asking the gm hey does this work does this work can i do this and the gm's like a lot of questions at once i'll just be like can i answer some like i'll, I'll like Pass them a note, a pass the demon note going, do you want me to answer some of these questions for you? Because since you're just playing standard, you know, then I've got like a, please do, and I'll take like the stall casters and be like, okay, this is this is what you can do in this system kind of thing, and let him deal with the fighty parts, because the fighty guys are the simplest ones of them all, and I'll like walk the spell casters, here's what you do. <laughs> and they're like, but, oh, okay. I think on that, we're going to have to uh, head out here for the day. Just uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring that bell especially if you're new we'd love to welcome you in and uh we'll see you tomorrow on thursday the 26th